Get away, Mike. Oh. Hello and welcome to our capstone final presentation of the warehouse design for felling trailers. Let us introduce our team members first. I'm Lloyd. I'm Carly. I'm Mike. And I am Elena. We are all graduating seniors in industrial engineering and management. Um, to go over the agenda real quick, we will introduce the company felling trailers and then we will go over the background and the data and literatures of the project along with the objective project plan and the midterm presentation. And then we will go over the approach assumptions, solutions of the project and the applications. And then we will go over the recap. So to introduce the company real quick, um, Felling is a manufacturer for customized trailers and they were founded in 1974 from a small Minnesota welding shop. Um, they st were started by Merle Felling and now led by two daughters and their husbands. Um, they are, there are two plants in Sauk Center in Litchfield, Minnesota now encompasses over 3, 325,000 square feet in total. Their trailer size ranges from 8 to 60 feet long. Their models range from 3,000 pounds utility trailers to 120,000 pounds hydraulic gooseneck trailers. Their current output is 5,000 trailers per year from the Sock Center facility. Their certifications are the quality management systems and the women-owned small business qualification. So trailer, uh, Felix Trails has uh, six lines uh, that features over 240 standard models. And here we're going to see some models that they have. Um, they have the construction model. The commercial one, the utility telecom uh, model, and the original equipment to manufacture the model, the government uh, model, and lastly, the they customize uh, different uh, uh, trailers based on the customer needs. So now that we've given a little introduction to felling trailers, we'd like to present uh, some background information for our capstone project. Felling trailers um, uses three main manufacturing systems to assemble their trailers, the first being welding, then painting, and lastly, a final assembly. Some details about these processes are that the facilities replicate a job shop layout that has spread out to 11 different buildings on campus. Trailers are transported by tractor or forklift, and in conjunction with our project, Felling is also implementing a just-in-time paint conveyor system. Capacity planning for Felling um, looks like a 7.5% yearly projected growth, and they indicated that new facilities should accommodate the next five years. More specifically, for our capstone project, the problem we were presented with is Felling needs a new warehouse design that improves the inventory flow for the final assembly process. Our environment was mainly an AutoCAD file, and we also conducted three on-site visits to, um, to observe their current warehouses. Motivation for doing well on this project is that more efficient storage and transportation methods will help improve the inventory bottleneck and could possibly influence production capacity. The timeline for when this warehouse should be constructed is around next winter. And here we're going to talk about some uh, data uh, and some literature. Uh, our sponsor has requested a saving study based on the trail handling of trails transportation to compare the existing and new trail flow in, in terms of cost. Because Felling is set to combine the paint and final assembly buildings into one building. For the existing trail flow, a trail tra travels for a total distance of 1.14 miles moving for nine movements between 10 stations. Um, the routes are fixed. It travels following the rainbow uh, colors, as you see. Uh, it ends at the loading building. To estimate this uh, cost for the existing uh, flow, we use the distance based the score method. To be able to use this method, we use Google Earth to measure the distance between the department's centroids, as you can see in the distance chart in Appendix uh, 8. 
if you keep looking at the index 8, uh, you're also going to notice that we have the daily flow volume chart between departments. So uh, based on the annual trailer output, the planet uh, will approximately produce 14 trails per day. And each trailer is set to be one move. Uh, our sponsor also have talked about uh, considering uh, uh, one third value for the manufacturing part. And that's about five extra movements. Based on these two charts and different moving costs per item per unit distance, we found that the existing uh, uh, flow will cost us around $2,725. The equation that's, uh, that's uh, in this slide uh, is simply done by multiplying the distance, for example, between the, any two stations like the drying station and the final assembly staging uh, area. Uh, multiplying that by the moving cost between them, and that's presented as C, by the flow volume of equipment between them, presented as F. Uh, the operating costs include the different equipment between departments, such as the electric forklifts and the driver wages, and also the tractor fuel. And now, if we look at the future plan setup, um, for the trailer travel between departments, we also see that the trailer will travel for a total distance of 1.10 uh, miles, moving for five movements, starting from the welding shop. The cost of this um, setup uh, will be 18.6% uh, less than the old one on a daily basis. The charts used to, uh, used to reach this estimation can be viewed in Appendix uh, 9. The inventory uh, that they have right now uh, is split between um, between uh, the bill of material and their warehouse employee knowledge. Their employees uh, indicated additional preferences on specific materials like wood and tires. The desired warehouse organization are to group uh, product families, work with the frequency of use, and finally weight and ergonomic uh, restrictions. The objective of our project is to design an efficient warehouse and inventory transportation method that optimizes the final assembly process for over the next five years. So now to go over the action plan a little bit. Um, if you could see the attached at appendix, um, you can see that we have 11 deliverables in the associated tasks below those and the assigned team members with, it, with the priorities and the percent complete. To briefly go over the midterm presentation, um, this is the layout alternative that the sponsor and the team has um, moved forward with. It incorporates the wood storage area, the wood cutting area, the two forklift charging stations, and it has three double-sided racks that sums up to 2,304 square foot in storage space and one single side rack that is 995 square feet in storage space. We also have axle storage, wheel storage, and the flow is bi-directional along with the aisle width of 11 feet. So in our midterm presentation, we stated that for our final presentation, we would like to get a simulation going using a software called Arena. Uh, we also consider, we wanted to consider other part delivery methods such as the Daifuku automated tugger vehicles, which we will explain later uh, furthermore. Uh, we also wanted to con collect ergonomic measurements along with looking at additional facility requirements such as bathrooms and office spaces. And then finally, we wanted to identify additional spaces and storage assumptions. Thank you, Elena, for outlining our goals. Now we're going to discuss the steps we took to achieve them. First off, a small COVID-19 disclaimer. Uh, we wanted to give an update on how the pandemic affected the back half of our project. The first being that uh, since the midterm presentation, we were unable to conduct on-site visits, which led to many remote conferences and meetings. Um, this eventually increased our assumption list and category since we were relying solely on felling to collect our data for us. Uh, but it also created many learning opportunities in risk and project management, which we feel are valuable. So here are our assumptions. 
The first lies in building constraints. Um, the warehouse, which sits within the final assembly and paint building, is constrained to the northeast corner of Felling Campus, as you can see by the large white rectangle. Our future warehouse dimensions are 200 feet by 90 feet by 30 feet high, and receiving operations will come in from a north-south road. This dictates where our garage doors will be. In addition, overflow storage is available in buildings 9 and 10, which is a great safety net to have. For our simulation, we assumed a uh, different average time to, to select the parts based on a hand slot versus a forklift slot. Distances were calculated using AutoCAD, and we also assumed travel times, loading times for an automated tugger, and a sub-assembly time where wheels are torqued onto axles before they're presented in the final assembly for the trailer. In addition, we have uh, several cyclic assumptions for the ARENA software. For rack space assumptions, we um, were able to calc we were able to collect on-site data for the dimensions, and so the length is eight feet, the depth is three feet, and you can think of a bay as equivalent to a shelf on a rack. And so, um, a rack that can hold hand slot items would have three bays, whereas a rack that holds forklift items can have up to six bays. This is since forklifts are able to extend higher than a uh, physical employee could reach. There is two foot space between double-sided racks five foot space between racks for axles and we had several assumptions regarding our product family sizes first we calculated the quantity of products that would come in a box the amount of boxes that we could fit in a bay the amount of bays that we could fit on a rack if given the product type being either a hand pick or a forklift pick and then the amount of racks that it would take to appropriately fit the family at either 100% or more for a given number of inventory turns. This um, lift was heavily in conjunction with employee knowledge and then Excel statistics. For product families, we considered lights, wiring, suspension, jacks, couplers, tires, and then a couple that we would like to outline specifically are axles and wood. Um, these constraints were a little more detailed in that they required special racking. And then internally manufactured parts, uh, which come from the weld shop, are able to sit on regular racks, but their location was constrained so that they were closer to the final assembly location and they also required a little more supervision. All right, so now that we know or that we specified the uh, building constraints and some assumptions, we were able to come up with a solution. So going off of our midterm presentation, we uh, were able to go ahead and come up with a design for the final assembly in warehouse building. So uh, if you move on to the next slide there, this is the uh, entire building uh, in which our warehouse that we were mainly concerned with uh, lies. So if you uh, go on with the animation one there. So this is the main area that we were focused with. And then in the uh, bottom left, we see the main warehouse portion. So uh, quite small in the grand scheme of things, but we were able to uh, uh, get this drawing from uh, Felling. It's a work in progress still, uh, but it gives us an idea of the uh, footprint that we're working in. And then uh, this main warehouse is feeding into the process uh, the final assembly process towards the right. So our main warehouse design that we came up with looks like this. Uh, as you see, we have 11 foot aisle widths. Uh, this, uh, the aisle widths are quite small, but due to the forklift that we've chosen, which we'll get to in a moment, we're able to keep uh, aisle width small to maximize storage space. Uh, a little bit different from the midterm presentation, uh, we included a bunch more wood cutting or uh, wood storage uh, and a dedicated wood cutting uh, area. We also have a 20 foot aisle width uh, on the left hand side, so that's uh, quite large, but we also want to uh, 
uh, take into consideration any additional uh, general racking where you see uh, regular parts stored to be added, uh, even end caps uh, as necessary. But if we were to add any more axle racking towards that end, it becomes a little too narrow. Uh, and then the next animation there. So we have tires on the bottom. The tires are uh, Currently, right now, they do not follow a first-in, first-out system. Tires are stacked on top of uh, each other uh, in uh, stacks of four on pallets, and each pallet gets stacked on existing uh, stacks of tires. So uh, they're not able to do a FIFO system, a first-in, first-out. Uh, if we were to store these on racks, we would be able to do a first-in, first-out. Um, this has a minimum capacity of 192 tires. Uh, taking the largest tire width, uh, we're assuming uh, in this drawing here that, that it's the largest tire uh, and uh, we're only able to get 192. Uh, in this drawing we have 41 axle racks and two double-sided racks. The two double-sided racks you see have uh, the uh, regular parts such as jack suspension, uh, and our finished manufactured products, which are located in proximity to offices, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, but the axles, we assumed uh, 30 to 40 per rack. It really depends on uh, uh, how many they're able to fit given the size of the axles. And then we see there is a wall uh, separating the woodcutting operations to the main warehouse. So this was uh, mentioned by the project sponsor that uh, they would like some uh, asset protection or uh, at least some asset separation. Um, and this also helps drive the flow of traffic between the two uh, areas. The woodcutting operations will be uh, a pretty steady flow as long as or as well as the uh, main warehouse. So we wanted to separate that traffic and make sure that there's no bottlenecks uh, with, if we were to combine the two there uh, there might have been. Then we also have doors going between the two just in case they need to bring vehicles or uh, people just need to go back and forth. And then you see we also just dedicated a small area in the t uh, on the right hand side there, a little bathroom in that uh, yellow rectangle. And so here's a, a look at, oh, if you go back there, and here's a look at where our offices are located with respect to the rack. So the offices are on a second level. Uh, you see the stairs there towards the top. Uh, and then these offices have windows overlooking the woodcutting operations, the warehouse, and then even the final assembly floor. So it's a great place for uh, supervisors and managers to be to oversee operations. So some areas of concern in our warehouse, we have forklift parking. Uh, this is just dedicated parking space just in case their uh, forklifts need to be charged, uh, but that doesn't necessi or necessitate uh, forklifts to be stored there at all. Uh, and then we have tuggers, our automated tuggers, which are uh, daifukus, which if you go to the next animation there, oh, one more. <clears throat> These are automated tuggers. So these are going to be the uh, kind of our workhorse transporting uh, finished carts or finished kits, as they're called, to the final uh, assembly floor. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details here, but the main thing I want to talk about is the description there. Towards the top, it says Model 300 Tunnel Tugger. The benefit to this tugger is that it has a low profile. Uh, the intent is to have the... Uh, the carts in which this tugger will pull to be a little bit more raised than normal so that this tugger can travel underneath them. So if there is anything in the way, this tugger can just travel right underneath. So if you go to the next one uh, here, I'm just going to highlight it again. Uh, so the tugger parking, which is uh, on that left hand side there of this drawing, it's underneath the racks. Uh, given that uh, they're 14 inches high, plenty of room for uh, the tuggers to uh, be parked while they're, or while they're not being used or charged. Then we have the cart kitting area. This is just a space allocated for when uh, a warehouse employee finishes picking all this, uh, the uh, parts to be brought to the final assembly floor um, to be staged before the automated tugger brings that cart out to the assembly floor.
And then we also have a sub-assembly station where tires and axles will be routed to. Uh, this is a new addition to felling, or they are uh, planning on adding it as soon as they can, where they will have a, uh, a, a record to back to uh, how tires were torqued to the axles. So at this uh, sub-assembly station uh, is where they will torque each tire to uh, specs to the axles. Uh, now, right now in this dry and they're not, uh, there's only a single uh, entrance. Um, but if we consider in the future that there's too much traffic, you see there now there's no wall. It might be beneficial depending on the traffic uh, within the warehouse itself to have a single exit and then a, a single exit in the future. So uh, to separate the flow of traffic between regular parts and then the axles as well. And then we also have cart staging towards the bottom. This is just a small space to uh, uh, realize that there is going to be a need for storage of carts, just regular carts, before they get brought out to the assembly floor. Um, now, if that's not enough, we can always take out axle racking. As uh, it was mentioned earlier, there is overflow storage as well. Then the overhead doors, entry and exits aren't uh, designated. Uh, for forklifts, just because it's a little hard to tell people what to do. But for the tuggers, we really wanted to designate uh, entry and exit. This just helps with the routing logic of our tuggers. And then the office spaces uh, that were uh, shown in the previous slide, here's a closer look. Uh, they're just 10 foot by 12 foot offices with 36 inch hallways. Uh, now you could always add uh, another set of stairs going into uh, on that south end. But again, I just wanted to highlight these have windows looking over to uh, uh, each each section of the warehouse op operations and then also the wood cutting storage and then uh, also the final assembly. And so once our tuggers uh, have a cart, and they're bringing it to the uh, final assembly floor. It'll travel in a path much like this. You see the arrows uh, traveling into the uh, those aisle ways. Uh, they'll drop off a cart in those yellow squares. Once they drop off that cart, uh, they'll be routed back up and down to the main warehouse entrance. We will now highlight our final layout features. So the layout will have uh, a, a wood storage, a wood cutting area, two forklift charging stations, three double-sided racks, one-sided rack on the south end, axle storage, uh, wheel storage, office spaces in the second floor, a bathroom, a tugger station, cart cutting area, and finally axle uh, sub-assembly station. To accommodate the needs of our final layout, uh, ROI conversion between three different forklifts was done. The inputs uh, of these results included the net profit and the operating costs, such as the two forklifts, the two operators, and the fuel per year. Also, the additional time for wood transportation. The only positive ROI with 20.4% uh, is generated if we pick the complete forklift, while, while the other ones will generate a negative ROI. Uh, before we play the video, um, if you are not familiar with the Arena Simulation software, it is a simulation software that you can assign entities, in this case, uh, carts and forklifts, and you can make them go to specific stations, in this case, like axles, tires, station one, station two, those sorts, and then you can route them a certain way, uh, shown in those blue lines, and you can assign them to stay at a station for as long as you wish, and you can also assign them to take as long as you want them to, to get to one station to another. In this um, simulation, we assigned and said that the, um, the cart and forklifts will start at their parking location, and then will end at the warehouse entrance. Now, if you could play the animation, um, some of the assumptions that we have, uh, the shift length are 9.5 hours. We will only have three carts going inside the warehouse at a time due to the number of employees that we will have. 
two forklifts at a time due to the number of forklifts that we will have, and we'll be making 8.8 .8 kits an hour. Um, you can kind of see how things flow. You can also notice that this is not a bi-directional flow and the exit and the entrance is specified on like what our real layout is, but that is due to the complication of the system and the simulation. Now to see the outputs of the simulation, we ran five replications to better understand the numbers. Um, the queues for state, all of the stations were mostly less than a minute. The longest queue was two minutes at one of the stations, which is not bad at all. The number of forklifts and carts that were waiting, most of them were less than one for, more, mo um, for most all of the stations, except for one. I believe they had one cart waiting there. Um, the number of forklifts in the carts that finished one cycle was 3.8 carts and two forklifts for the whole shift. The number of carts that went to the tugger was 2.8, meaning that it requires less than one tugger for every hour, which seems like it doesn't justify to buy a tugger, the Daifuku, but you, ha um, you have to understand that increasing the number of either the forklifts or the number of employees does increase the number of the outcomes, making it to about one tugger an hour. And to also understand that the directional flow is just a single direction, and the, uh, the simulation doesn't understand the five-year growth rate. So now that we've presented some of our solutions, we're going to go over what it all means for felling trailers in our application section. For a final cost savings, we looked at four main operations, trailer transportation, wood operations, axle operations, and then purchasing our combo lifts, as Loie had mentioned in the ROI. For our trailer transportation, we're expecting an 18.6% savings uh, just from having the trailers not be routed as many or for as many miles around the felling campus. Wood operations, we're expecting a 50% savings, being that we're able to store more wood in one place. The operation is now separate from the final assembly process, and our new forklifts are better able to accommodate the, the wood storage and the wood presentation. For axle operations, we're expecting a 75% savings, since again, our inventory is almost completely consolidated in one place, as opposed to currently it's spread out across three or four different buildings and some outside storage. Um, in combination with the sub-assembly process and the part delivery, this accounts for the 75%. And then purchasing two combo lifts amounts to $124,000. In total, we're expecting a year one savings of just over $180,000. And given the growth capacity of 7.5% each year, this compounds to a five-year total savings of just under $2 million. This also assumes that Belling will likely purchase another two combo lifts, totaling to four combo lifts over the five years. Lastly, as we know, strategic business decisions are not just made from monetary outcomes, and so we wanted to give some qualitative benefits for our solutions. First off, our new warehouse consolidates most inventory for the final assembly process. We designated combo lift, tugger, and cart storage areas. There's plenty of options for vertical expansion given the high ceilings. We believe our inventory organization is logical and easy to learn, which is important for new employees as well as veteran employees that are placed um, in a new setting. The combo lifts provide time savings, can accommodate a wider range of products to transport, and can also operate in more narrow aisles, which allows for more overall storage space. Separate wood cutting operations lead to better process management. Our warehouse can accommodate an automated tugger system if desired, as Elena indicated. We have additional office spaces and restrooms, which are important employee amenities. And the second level viewing platforms are also good for management. Lastly, our warehouse implements opportunities for shadow boards and additional methods for equip effective equipment management. All right, so uh, to recap what we just went over here today, uh, we introduced felling and gave a little bit of a background, uh, some data and literature, uh, stated our objective 
uh, as well as the project plan, uh, give you an overview of what our midterm presentation looked like, uh, and then also uh, showed you our approach to generating our solution, some assumptions, uh, and then we showed you our solution, uh, and then some applications as well. And thank you for your time. Thank you.